Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. This is a follow-up from my video the other day of using the Clothoid transition to make the apple corner, like a transition between a line and an arc. This is the result where I got to the other day using a G2 approximation of the Clothoid. I'll put a link in the description if you want to watch the previous video, which describes how I arrived at this point. I had some questions in the previous video about squircles or super ellipses. Uh, there seems to be quite a bit online about Apple using the squircle for corners and I think there's a bit of an assumption as well out there that they use them for, for product corners as well as uh, the interface UI. So I thought I'd I'd have a quick look at that. Um, that's not the main focus of this video so I'm just, just going to dive in here quickly. So I grabbed uh, someone's got a definition online for a squircle. Uh, within Grasshopper, so basically I've I've set the squircle up so the half width is roughly the same as the start point of my my corner which I built in the previous video, and then adjusted the squircle. I'm not quite sure what the name of this is. It's like the row value or something in a conic uh, to get as close as I can to my reference curve. So you can see there. There's a curvature plot on the outside. I'll just turn the. So you can see there. There's a curvature plot. This has been rebuilt. So the definition in Grasshopper spits out a pile of points, um, as you can see there. And you've got to rebuild a curve through those points. So there is some variation in curvature there, depending on how you define where the uniform spacing, etc. Anyway. So I think what you can take from this is there is no sort of constant curvature through here like an arc, uh, no radius. I don't think it matters how much you play around with this. You're not going to get there. It's going to be accelerating constantly up to a point and then decelerating back down. Also, there'll be issues I'd imagine with trying to get a G2 connection to a, a line at this point and this point here. Because I'm assuming here because I can't actually I don't have the programming chops to take this and uh, just make a like a quadrant and then try and uh, build a line off it so I'm trying to set something up but you know trying to figure out what's possibly the most um, repeatable sort of way of building out a corner like this and in SolidWorks I'd, I'd have to make a an equation curve and stuff like that so and it doesn't actually look to fill um, sort of the requirements of having a nice linear, a nice even arc form in the middle uh, with a transition on each side. So Squircle I think is, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. I'm going to jump over into SolidWorks now. I, I kind of took what I did the other day and took it a bit further. As you can see there, I've got five different experiments here. So I've got three piece G2, so basically what I had in Rhino just before and what I ended up with in my other video. I've got three piece G3, which uses the same stop start points for the for the transition curves. Then I've got a three piece G3, which I've added some relief, some breathing room, so the G3, the degree seven spline can move around a bit more. Then I've got a one piece approximated G3, um, so a single spline right around, and then a one piece G3 with relief to give it some more breathing space. So. I'll just go into each sketch and explain what's going on. Okay, so this is what I ended up with uh, out of Rhino the other day. Again, look at the previous video if you want to see what the construction and and uh, what my control sketch here does. This G2, or this degree 5 spline here, is approximating the clothoid curve output. So that's going from zero curvature and then it's matching G2 connection to the arc there. So the next one is looking at now i have a, a degree seven so eight cvs single span curve here with a g3 connection on each end and that's that's within the same length as the g2 curve in the previous sketch i just showed so you can see here there's a bit of wobbliness going on there which isn't really surprising because uh, we're kind of squeezing that that spline into a, a smaller space so i thought okay well you can see what's happening here the rate of curvature change is equal now at the ends being g3 but yeah there's these two this this extra wobble going on 
Next thought was to add a bit of breathing room. So if I bring up my control sketch and show you that. So I was previously working from this point to this point with the spine. So I've added um, some, some circles here to give me some setback. So now I'm, instead of going from this point to this point, I'm going to go from this point to this point to allow the G3 uh, style spline a bit more space to, to move around. And that's what this is. Unfortunately I can't get SolidWorks won't let me have the same um, curvature graph scale ev even when you're looking at an arc uh, within each sketch. So what I've done in this sketch here is I've converted entities of my three-piece G2 which is let's call it the baseline um, so we can see sort of what the differences are. So that with that sharp corner that, that curvature graph there that's the G2 three-piece and the other curvature graph is my three-piece G3 with relief. So as I said this has got extra breathing space so the, the spline can curve, you can see the curvature there and it's pretty close. Right next up is a one-piece G3. I'm going to have to change the uh, scale of the curvature graph here. This one's using the same start starting endpoints of the transition uh, curve here from my control except it's a single spline right the way around from um, from each line from that line to this line that single spline uh, and I've just added these dimensions and kind of dragged the points around and I've matched these segments have got an equal distant relationship so this is basically mirrored around a 45 degree line. The thing I struggle with with this kind of setup is with my other setup with some relief with the circle um, and some construction it's quite easy just to have a few like multiplying numbers that you refer to whereas this I guess you could do the same thing it's a bit more interpretive um, or subjective as far as what you're trying to match here so so you can see here there's quite a bit of variation from our, our linear control there so that's the control there going up to the point that's the G2 clothoid approximation and then the other curvature graph is the single, as we look down here, degree 7, single span curve. Okay, next one up, I thought I'd give that some relief as well, like I did for the three-piece version. So again, some construction, except I don't need any construction in the middle here. Actually gave that even more space to, uh, to curve. And some dimensions again, just to control uh, that spline space. Okay, so I'm not really coming to any conclusions on this. I'm, I've just made some examples and actually query what you guys might think. I'll just roll this forward so we can have a look. So I've thickened those to check an offset. I've thrown a chamfer on the back face, um, back edge. I've thrown a curvature continuous fillet on the outside. And, you know, I can't really... I'm going to get a migraine with these zebras. It's pretty hard to tell uh, the, if anything's much is different going on, right? I think this is much, uh, you know, these these will, the variations in these will sort of jump out at you if you start trying to build geometry off these, like like the pillowed surface on the top of the, the MacBook here. That's when it's going to sort of stand out. Even the wobbly... Um, curvature on this the surface here can't really you can't tell much is going on i thought okay let's do a sweep with some form on it rather than just an extrude okay so i thought i will i will sweep an arc along those uh those bits of uh construction geometry as well just to sort of give us more form to look at maybe i thought it might be easier to evaluate and see the difference here i mean you can see the difference in start points you can see the difference in these three segments versus single and we turn the zebras on it's i mean they're all they're all pretty smooth and they offset um there was no issues there uh, nothing funky on the inside after offsetting them well not offsetting using the thicken so i think they're all fairly okay Personally, I like the, at the moment, I'll probably change mine tomorrow, but I like the three-piece 
G3 relief because uh, that's pretty easy for me to set up with the control sketch and a couple of multipliers and then again the the relief you can tie that to your to the to the radius multiplier as well whereas with the with the one piece spline just controlling those dimensions it just gets a little bit more complicated so yeah i don't know what your thoughts are i'll put this file in the description so there's something to look at it's a solidworks 2020 file cool thanks for watching i uh, hopefully i'll be back next video with the macbook and i'll update the corner with one of these haven't decided yet which one okay thank you see ya